Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Jacob here. Today I want to show you guys how to make your own printed circuit boards. I'll leave a link down in the description for all the stuff that I use, but its total is about $20, um, and then you can get this rig up and going. Uh, and it's pretty simple. It's not super precise, but it's cheap and simple and easy to do. And you'll be able to turn blank circuit boards like this. This is about 50 cents or so. I think I got it off Amazon. Uh, it's just a blank piece of fiberglass with copper coated over the top of it. Um, and you can turn it into something like this. This is just a nightlight. It's not super pretty, but it was a proof of concept. You can see that I etched the design of the circuit onto the back here and drilled all the holes for all the components and soldered all of them in here on the back. And when you plug it in, it works just like a nightlight. So like I said, it's not super precise, but it's very easy and you guys can get started today. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started and you can follow along. All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to want to do to this guy here is uh, actually clean it. We're going to want to wash it because we've been touching it with our greasy fingers and stuff, and it might have been sitting in storage for a while. So we're going to wash it with soap and water and a sponge. Real simple, easy. It's You don't have to be super careful. Just don't use anything abrasive on it because you might scratch off uh, some of the coating of copper. Be sure to get it dry as soon as possible because any water sitting on it can be bad. It can rust the copper. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is draw your design on the copper side of your plate here. Some circuit boards may have two sides, so this side will be copper and this side will also be copper. And you would want to, the process would be roughly the same, but you would want to draw your circuit on one side and then draw the corresponding circuit on the opposite side and then etch them both at the same time. But as you can see here, um, I have drawn up a schematic for something that I was doing back uh, a while ago. This is just an example, but what you would want to do is come up with your schematic and then think about where these things are going to connect and where you would want them to fit on your circuit board. And once you have them on your circuit board, you want to think about where this circuit board's going. If it's going to go inside of an enclosure, if it's going to go inside of something somewhere that might have uh, space requirements so you'd want to make this smaller or larger or pay attention to where s smaller or larger components go and so you'd want to design that here on paper first so today all I'm doing I need a way to connect wires to a breadboard like this I'm not going to be doing any circuitry um, all I'm going to be doing is something simple all I want to do is be able to connect say this here to wires from this battery pack that I have um, so I can just connect the batteries here have that come straight down onto a circuit board and I can use that electricity for whatever it is that I'd like and I don't have very many of these um, already drilled out boards I want to use these for uh, another project that I have in mind so I'm going to use this and what I'm going to do put this through here I'm going to make two, I'm going to call them bridges, I suppose you could call it. And I'm going to draw directly onto this back circuit board with a pencil. Uh, and I want to have eight wires here. It's not critical where these holes go. Okay, so it might be a little bit difficult to see. Let's see here. But you can see all those little dots right there so what I'm going to do what my ultimate goal is here there should be 32 dots um, and I have four groupings of eight so there's like a top left square a top right square a bottom left square and a bottom right square what I want to do is I want to make lines connecting these four together like this these four together down here and I'm gonna basically cut out this and make each one of these bridges so I can connect things together and solder header pins so I can connect things onto my breadboard so all I'm going to do is extremely simple now that this is nice and clean this is going to adhere to this copper very well all I'm going to do is draw Sharpie between each one of these here. Okay. 
just like this. So now I know that the tips are where all of the holes are going to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this into an acid and it's going to eat away all of the excess copper. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to cut this in half so I can save the other half of this. There's no reason to waste all that copper. Now what I have done here is I've marked, marked each side like this so that I have a general idea of where I'm going to cut. This doesn't need to be exactly precise, but I'm going to score this. So that when I go to break this, it breaks along this line. I'm also going to score this side. And now it should be as simple as that. Perfect. So now I'll save this for a later project. And we're going to go ahead and go outside with this. And we're going to etch these lines into this board. Alright guys, sorry about the background noise. There are a couple of air conditioners running back here, but uh, uh, this is where we're going to etch our circuit board here. Um, always remember to wear PPE, personal protective equipment, when you're working with heavy oxidizers or any acids or any chemicals that could potentially be dangerous. You can hurt yourself. And you cannot see it, but I am wearing goggles to protect my eyes so I read online that the proper mixture for muriatic etching is two parts hydrogen peroxide that is 3% and one part muriatic acid if you can see here up here in active ingredients hydrogen peroxide 3% that's exactly where we need to be And you can see here, muriatic acid. I think I got this at Lowe's. It was like $10 or something like that. We are going to go ahead and I'm going to put a half of a cup of hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to put that in this bowl here. And I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of muriatic acid. in here as well and now all we're going to do is we're going to take our circuit board here and we're going to lay it inside of this solution and you will see in just a few seconds that it begins to etch away at all the copper It's not a bad idea to shake it, get all the oxidization off the outside. Uh, I've seen other people maybe brush over the top of it with a sponge or something like that, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to wear off the uh, Sharpie. It's been just about five minutes, and it looks like it's taken a little bit longer than I expected, but no matter. It's still etching. You can see all the bubbles forming. That's from the copper oxidizing which is exactly what we want. You may also be able to see that the liquid is starting to turn greenish. That's from the oxidized copper. You can probably see that green tint sitting over the top of that circuit board as well. We'll let it keep sitting here for a couple more minutes.
two things to note here. One, you may want to set something on top of the board if it keeps on floating up. Mine was, so I have this glass jar sitting on top of it to keep it down below the uh, level of liquid here. Uh, the second thing is, be careful not to touch any of those lines in there. Be careful not to agitate the, uh, the Sharpie marks because I, I did that before and I had to uh, make a second board here because the uh, the copper was inconsistent the lines were not gonna be continuous it would be broken so uh, just a side note all right we have almost all the copper off of here we can do a little bit more cleanup um, at our workstation so let's go rinse this guy off and uh, take it from there So you can see here that after the edging, this liquid is fairly green. Uh, that is due to the copper oxide that built up um, after removing all of the copper from the circuit board. Even though this etchant is, uh, contains some copper oxide, I have been told that it is even more effective with this copper oxide in this. I'm not 100% sure how accurate that is, but I do know that I have used the same etchant repeatedly and it continues to get more and more green until it is too saturated with copper oxide and you have to throw it out and get make a new solution but this should be just fine to etch with again uh, multiple times all right guys so I have this all etched properly you can see that there are there is still a little bit of copper left out over here. I could have left this in that etching a little bit longer, but if you look carefully, there's an almost zero copper in between the line uh, the lines that I drew, with the exception of this here. Um, but that should be okay. If I'm worried about it, I can take a razor blade or something and scrape those through. Before we go any further here, we need to take that sharpie off before we can drill holes or solder anything. So what we're going to do is we are going to take acetone and I'm basically going to paint the surface of this with acetone and it's going to remove all that sharpie like magic. So let's get started. Alright, I've gotten the surface of this towel here wet with acetone and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to wipe this here. Look at that. Now you can see we have these nice clean copper strips. Next what I'm going to do, you can see how those sharpie lines, they line up in there. I'm going to take a pencil and draw where uh, in these holes uh, the tops and the bottoms to mark where I need to drill so I can drill the hole so I can solder the components on. Alright, you can see on here that I put little dots. Uh, these are corresponding to the distances on the breadboard so that when I drill the holes in the, uh, and I solder the components through here, they're all going to line up on the breadboard and everything is going to be happy. So I'm going to go ahead and take my circuit board holder here. Slide this in right there, and I'm going to get my Dremel, and I'm going to Dremel out those holes right on those dots. Always remember to protect your eyes. And there we are. We have our copper lines with the holes on either side. Um, now the holes you can tell are not 100% exact, but that's okay. What we're gonna end up doing, at least for my project here, is I'm gonna take these here and put them in through this hole. And then just solder them on the back side there. Just like that. And you can see they stick out just like that. And then you can plug it straight into a breadboard and that'll be it. Now what I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to use a cutoff wheel. I'm going to cut the four sections out of here and then I'm going to solder in the pins. Okay, so I've scored both sides, and it should now just be as easy as crack it and break it off. All right, as you can see, I have each of these set up here, and you can see their respective copper lines on them with their holes. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do I'm going to heat up my soldering iron, take some of these pin headers here, and I'm going to solder them inside of these holes, and then I will be free to connect random wires from random things into these here so that I can connect things to my breadboard simply. To anybody who is curious, I will be soldering the header pins onto these uh, bridges just like this. So I stick them into the breadboard and then I lay the bridge across here and I will solder it down below. And then I can pull it out and I'll be able to plug it into the breadboard. I finished soldering uh, all four of these bridges here. Uh, one of them failed. For whatever reason, it might have been I, I got it too hot and the uh, copper strip peeled up off of the um, fiberglass, but that's what it looks like there. I'm going to go ahead and plug them into the circuit board and perform a resistance test on them and make sure that none of them are touching one another, just to be sure. Okay, so the, none of these here are touching. I'm going to test the other two. Alright, so I had a little bit of a connection between the first pin over here on this side and the one next to it. And all I did was I took the back side of a razor blade, the dull edge, and I scratched it to make sure that I got any of that excess copper that was between them off. And it no longer is making connection. So now at this point, I should be able to plug these into my breadboard here. Now I'm going to go ahead and check across the circuit board and make sure that all of these pins are connected properly. Alright, and as you can see here, I have these wires connected up to these bridges here. And I'll be able to plug them in directly into my breadboard. As you can see here, I have my battery cells off camera. But they are all connected up here. And I have them labeled negative, series B, series A, and positive. And that's the different series that I have in there. Um, I need to test some battery charging circuits, but I digress. Let's take a look here. I should be able to jump across these here and see the first series at 3.8 volts. The first cell, the second cell should be 7.7, .7, and then all the way up is 11.5. And that is the final product. Now in this circumstance, I only have two wires connected up to one of these bridges, and that's because um, these lithium-ion batteries that are off camera over here are very high voltage and high amperage, 
and uh, I don't want to have them short out and damage anything so I have them spaced out uh, I have it one in the first hole let's see I have one in the first hole and then I skip a hole and then I have one in the next hole then I skip a hole and then I go to the next one like that so that it's two wires per four slots anyways thank you guys so much for watching I really appreciate it I hope that you enjoyed the video today um, I enjoy making my own circuit boards. I like the idea of taking something that I have in my mind and then making it real in my own hands by uh, my own means. So, Anyways, if you guys like the video, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe. Put some comments down below of things that you liked or didn't like or things I could do better. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out!